there are two commonly used ways to start internet videos, and one of which is the, hi guys, and the other is, today I'm going to show you, both of which drive me nuts. Um, so I need a better way to start these, since I apparently think enough of myself to do more of them. Um, and I'm taking suggestions, so send them along please. I wanted to do a video about spinning from the lock, which I've just started doing this week. I'm not uh, very practiced at it at all. The I s started doing it because um, I read the Margaret's or watched the Margaret Stove video about spinning for lace, and that's the way she does it. And I'm going to do everything that Margaret tells me to do. And the other reason for that was because I had a nice little swappy time with my friend Barbara and she sent along some beautiful Cormo that's perfect for lace and it's in locks. So the first stuff that I've done spinning from the lock was for lace and I've got the Cormo right here and I'm just you know doing it uh, pretty much like it is in the video you know you find the tip I get a very small amount because I cannot handle very much in my hand right now and um, take it apart and the butt ends, the cut ends on this are a little bit matted and so I've been flicking them out so that I don't have to struggle when I'm spinning and I like the little tip that I saw where um, you put a twist in so that you don't lose your fiber on your card. I'm just been hopefully lightly getting out that little matted part so I don't have slubs in my lace. And then um, kind of teasing out the the tip end so that it'll um, flow better when you're doing lace. And I use um, Scotch Tension as light as I can. Um, oh, I was way up there. As light as I can. And, um, you know, my smallest twirl and my smallest pulley. And um, I'm trying to do a, you know, a backwards draw. Um, I have a little bit of problem where I let my twist get ahead of me sometimes, but um, I think I've solved that by taking some advice and adding a little bit more tension, which is nerve-wracking because I haven't gotten to the point with lace where it's just a, you know, a, an automatic spin, and now that I've changed my technique a little bit from what I was doing before, I am back to having heart palpitations. Um, so having to up the tension stressed me out a little bit, but uh, I think it's, it's doing better. And then on the opposite end of the spectrum, I've been trying to do thick and thin from the lock. And my main idea came from this, and of course, I don't know the yarn's name or where I saw it, other than it was in a knitting magazine and there was a yarn that had, um, in between like thin thick and thin, regularly looking spun, you know, just kind of artsy yarn um, looking sections. It had sections where you could see the entire lock and the crimp in it, and I oh, thought that was fantastic. And since I was spinning, of course, I've kept it in mind as something that I would like to replicate. Um, and I don't think this is um, a polypay cross. I'm pretty sure the cross is Caracal, because I think this was one of Bacchus's babies. Um, this is lamb's wool, um, and it's not necessarily ideally suited to making that kind of yarn, but it's what I've got. Um, I'd like to get this kind of perfected and then try it on some long wool, because that, I think, is what the original yarn that I'm thinking of, I think it must have been a long wool breed, and um, you could get like those curly locks in the yarn and actually see the lock in the yarn. I think that'd be really fun. So what I've been doing for this is... Um, making sure that I've got a very defined lock, pulling it out just like the lock, 
and then this is tippy um, so I'm breaking off the tips and then also because of the way I'm making the yarn it's all basically worsted joints so I'm flicking out the very like top half inch of this just fanning it out so that I can get good joins, but trying to leave it basically in the lock. For this thick and thin one, I've got my highest pulley, I mean my largest pulley, you know, in a fairly aggressive take up. And um, what I'm trying to do is get a lock in there and kind of just stagger them. I'm just pulling from the end. I have plans um, during finishing to fold the yarn so that it's like a little bit felted and just a little more of an insurance policy, but um, you can see there's kind of like a full staple length here. This one's drifting, so that's not good, um, but this one isn't. Here's a good one. So either end is, is um, pretty skinny, but in the middle it's basically unspun. <laughs> 